Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and in this video I wanted to give some reflections on the flipped classroom. If you're not familiar with the flipped classroom, the term was coined by a couple of chemistry teachers in Colorado, Aaron Sams and Jonathan Bergman. And basically what they did is said, let's take the things that we normally do in class, lecture, and flip it outside of the classroom using video podcasts, and then the things that we normally do outside of class, like homework and problems, let's do that in class. And it frees the teacher up in class so it can help them. And they also developed a mastery system and a way to move the kids through it. And so I've been using elements of the flip classroom for the last three years. And a lot of my videos are used by other teachers to flip the classroom. And there's a few unsettled things about the flip classroom. It's been somewhat controversial. And so I wanted to talk to some of those things. First one is the idea of equity. I, I struggled with that when I was requiring kids to do things at night, I had to come up with ways to make sure that they all could do that. And so that meant putting it on a flash drive or burning it on a DVD or even giving them a computer so they could use it at home. But what I realized is that that's just technology equity. It's not time equity. And students at night are going to do different things. Some of them have to work a job or babysit. And so it was unfair to require my students to do something on their own. I've also think that we've tended to oversimplify it. Even the term flipped classroom is taking one of the least compelling parts of it, just making these videos that you can watch, and then making that the defining characteristic. So people will come up to me and they'll say, oh, I'm flipping my classroom, I'm just showing some Khan Academy videos, I'm showing some of your videos, and then it's working great. And so I, I think that oversimplifies it a little bit because we all know, if we're teachers, how complex a classroom is. We're also throwing teachers into an area where they feel like they have to flip the classroom. And if you really flip the classroom, if you really step out of the way and let kids independently move through a mastery system, you better be prepared for a pretty challenging year because not all students are gonna wanna do that. Not all students are really good at independent learning and so it's going to be a struggle and they're not going to blame themselves they're going to blame the way that you've set up your classroom and so you got to get ready for a fall that's going to be somewhat challenging and you have to stick to your guns because it's going to be a, a long year I mean I've taught for 18 years I was Montana teacher of the year and this year was really a struggle because some students just um, it didn't work for them and they struggled with reading comprehension, they struggle and continue to struggle with independent learning. And so it's not just a panacea that can solve everything. And, and so I, I worry that we oversimplify it by just saying you, you simply have to flip the classroom. I also have um, kids who say, my teacher just makes me watch your videos and they don't teach. Or teachers who are saying, I'm showing other people's videos but the kids really don't like it because they want to hear me talk and so I think it's pretty complex and that's education and so the way I like to think about it is that flipping the classroom is just one tool and it's like one paint and through the course of your teaching career you're gonna figure out tons of different methods that you can use to improve learning in your classroom but it's personalized. In other words, every classroom is going to be different. And what might work for me is not going to work for other te teachers. But there are going to be elements of that that are going to work for me. And, and we're in a time now where technology is working and technology is everywhere. And technology allows us to do some of these things. And so it's a movement. But I don't think we can pare it down to just a simple, you just have to flip the classroom kind of a movement. Because art had movements as well and the people inside those movements weren't doing what they were doing because that was the new thing to do this they weren't doing art like this because it was time to do post impressionistic art they were doing it because of the time they were in and then what motivated them to do that and so I think teachers have to kind of relax a little bit and realize that they shouldn't have to throw out everything that they've done they have to figure out what elements of instruction is going to allow you to be more successful. And so I like to think of it almost like a continuum. And so if we look down in the corner, this would be a passive classroom versus an active classroom. And this would be a teacher-centered classroom and then a student-centered classroom. And my goal is to move my classroom from a passive teacher-centered learning environment to an active student-centered learning environment.
But that's not a goal that I just got this last year or over the last three years. I've always had that goal. I mean, I've always believed in differentiated instruction and inquiry labs and getting the students to do the learning. It's just that there have been a lot of hurdles. How do you differentiate for 30 different kids in your class when they're all at different levels? And so I think technology is finally allowing us to do that. And so for me, some of the most compelling elements of the flipped classroom are Number one, a mastery system where kids aren't moving it on until they really understand the material. So they're moving at their own pace. And then the other thing that's for me is most compelling is that teachers are able to get out of the way. And so for me this year, by me stepping out of the way and the kids are kind of driving the train, we've been able to move up towards the more green side of here. And that's simply because I was able to step aside. Now, I love lecturing. I love doing that. But I had to stop and let the kids do that. And some of them are struggling and some of them are are continuing to struggle. But I think that's where education has to move. And we've always known that. Mastery learning has been around forever. It's just that right now the technology is making it a possibility. And so if you hate flipped classroom, I'd like you to look a little more deeply and find that there's some compelling things in it. If you're just a flipped classroom advocate, I think you need to realize that every teacher has to adapt elements of this to what might work in their classroom. And again, that's just me, and that's just one opinion. And thanks for listening.